Hello and welcome to Plus Politics. I am better qualified to rule Lagos. Lagos SDP Guba candidate Kunle Utman says ahead of governorship polls. And boot party collapses structures in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, forms alliance with Labour Party. Once again, this is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Kunle Uthman, who is the Social Democratic Party SDP Lagos governorship candidate, last week promised to make water transportation effective if voted into office in 2023. This is said at an interactive session with political party candidates in Lagos. He says among all other candidates running for the position of governor in Lagos, he is better qualified. We're now joined to discuss this tonight by Kunle Utman himself, governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party. Well, thank you for uh, joining us on the show this evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, I'm, I'm, a lot of people are surprised because uh, you have said the things that you are going to do if you are elected into office as governor. In the meantime, we've heard rumors, these are still rumors until we confirm from you, that your party has collapsed its structures and are joining the APC. How true is this? Well, I don't think it's rumor. What has happened is the APC has given this supposed rumor a rubber stamp of the fact that it is true. And that creates a lot of problem. Because first and foremost, we have not joined the APC in this election. And we can never, ever join the APC. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we can't join them is we believe that they have failed. Governor Babagde Sonwolo has failed to serve the people of Lagos State in the last four years. And we believe that his failure is such that anybody who associates with that political party and the forthcoming gubernatorial election is also going to have the stain on himself as a failure. And because the Social Democratic Party, we know as a fact that we have the manpower, we have the competence, and we have the cerebral personalities to do the job. And we have a manifesto that is citizen-friendly, poised for a change. So we cannot be seen to associate with a failure. And why it is a failure is this announcement that we have joined them was made on their own official platform. They have this platform they call Lagos Focus on WhatsApp. They are all there. Every one of them is there. Deputy Governor down. Even the governor's wife, I think, is there. It's being administered by one guy. His name is Kofak Bedou. And they always speak from this platform. So it's not a rumor. They have put us in a situation where it has become obligatory, imperative, that we must tell the world that we have nothing whatsoever in common with APC in Lagos State, and it is not an option that we have. I've spoken with the chairman of the party, I've spoken with the national secretary, and we know that whoever or whatsoever, they are doing their own, their own. It is fake news. And if a political party at this stage of election will engage in fake news, we can as well also say it is a fake political party that is determined to rubbish other people, to interfere in the politics of their party, and begin to go around and say they have joined us. Now, the APC in Lagos State is obliged to show us, number one, who are the members of SDP that joined them? Number one, because... I am the official leader of the Social Democratic Party in Lagos State. Nothing happens in this state without my consent and information. When I don't have any information, my consent was never sought, and I know all our House of Assembly candidates. Keru, Marufu, Esere, Mesis, Oshodi, the man in Ekpe, Olatuji, Every one of us, we are intact as a political party, including uh, Fashui Abimbola, who is in Amu World of Him. I've asked everybody. Nobody was part of this rogue arrangement. Now, the APC must tell us what. The people, the document that was signed. Because if two parties come together, 
there must either be a memorandum of understanding between the two of them or there must be a document. If they don't bring that out, then I actually feel sorry for them. That in their desperation to get this Babatunde Sowolu uh, re-elected, they are actually doing everything that is wrong. They are playing the tribal ticket. They are playing the religious ticket. They are tensing us in Lagos State. This is a place where all of us, we are, we are very happy. The Igbo man is up in here. The Yoruba man is, the Aussie man is, all of us who have been living together, we are intermarried. So what is this nonsense that they have impl simply brought in because of re-election? When it was time to campaign and we were debating, Babatunde Sawolu was everywhere, following his political godfather to chat him out to clap. While he was in England, some organization organized the debate. We were all there. Jandor was there. I was there. Dwati was there. I think Dixon was there. And the one who was organized at four points by charity, by a group of cerebral people, he never ever attended any debate. We don't know what he wants to do for the state. His 21 year rail project is a complete failure. He cannot start the blue rail. His hospitals are in a mess. The roads are in a mess. The traffic gridlock everywhere. But instead of him to tell us what he's going to do to change the narrative, all we are adding is, he's marching with this one, he's going to this church to campaign, he's in this select church, he's going to compute a complete nonsense. Okay, uh, well, because of uh, the showing uh, from the last election, the presidential election, uh, SDP didn't make such a huge impact, but the story could be different now. Uh, I'm asking, if you're not having an alliance with the APC, are you having any alliance with another political party? First and foremost, let me deal with the first part of your question. SDP did not make any showing before we had no senator. We had no House of Representative member. We have, it was just all of us. Using our resources and the support of our friends to sustain the party, now we have senators. Now we have House of, House of Representative members in the two houses. So it's not a zero level free. We have made progress. Number two, we are building a political structure. We are building a party from scratch, right? And by the time we finish this election, we also believe that a couple of governors will emerge. Lagos State might come to us. There was once a Sarumi and Bala Jobi problem in this state and I thought an Otodela emerge. Maybe we are looking at an Otodela arrangement. Because the first call that this APC is engaging in shows that the chances of them winning this election is a little bit small. Now let's go to the presidential election. Yes, it's also an APC problem. They lost woefully in Lagos State. If they elected the president who says Lagos is my home, he has been saying this for a long time. And we have been saying, you know, if Babajide Sawolu was in Lagos State and his party lost in Lagos State, then they have a problem. And that is why they are engaged in this political frenzy, that at all costs, they must win. So what are they doing? They are chanting war songs everywhere. This man must work for me if they don't try to war songs. They are chanting religious songs. No, let it be a level playing ground. For us in the APC, we are convinced beyond doubt. APC or SDP? The Social Democratic Party, we are convinced APC can never ever be convinced. We are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that number one, we have selected very good people to participate in this election. We are not everywhere. We are not in the four, 40 hours of assembly seats. But the ones we are going to contest, they are good people, they are nice people, they are cerebral people. This is number one. Number two, we believe that Chief Kula Uthman, you know Chief Kula Uthman, right? That is me. Is a fit and proper person to govern the state, and I've been, I have displayed it in terms of my cerebral powers at the debates. Everybody says, Kule, you are simply excellent. So for me, I am not, I am not desperate. Power belongs to the people. What democracy means is a government of the people, for the people, by the people. On Saturday, the people of Lagos State, whether Igbo, whether Yoruba, whether Aousa, whether Kanuri, will go to the polls. Huh? And they will vote. At the end of the day, we have to respect the decision of the people. There is going to be mass youth participation. We shall allow the electoral process to go through. So we will not be the first governor in Labour State to spend one time. After Babatunde Fashola, who did two times. And Bode, one time. So we will maybe, you will join the one-time people. And even when 
The political godfather attempted to remove Fashola. The people came around and said, no, you can't, because he was popular. The only reason why this man is running around and lying everywhere, and he asked the media team that is putting forth wrong information to the public, is because he has performed woefully. Sangros market, he didn't do it until I started shouting, Sangros, Sangros, they are building it now. And we got here, he didn't do anything there. Commuting in Lagos is a traffic problem. And four years ago, when he was going to be sworn in as governor, the interview preceding the debate, he promised, if I don't solve, if I don't solve the traffic deadlock in Lagos State, I will not be justified to be governor anymore. He has not done anything. So his F9 card should make sure that he goes back to Idiabu Imushi, where he comes from, and allow us to breathe. But uh, he would say that the rail lines have come up. No, it hasn't though. come up. A rail line come up saying. means that the trains will move, my friend. It will move. Have you ever entered that train? The only train we enter is the one that belongs to National Railway Corporation. It's not a rail line. It's a monoline. And this monoline started by Fashola eight years. I'm about there four years, 12. Himself four, 16. CNS to my two. Disaster of a goal. I'm going to spend on this project. Okay, uh, well... You said you did well in the debate. Yes, you really did well in the debate. But it goes beyond doing well in the debate. What are the antecedents that people will look at to say Kunle Utman is a good person to rule Lagos? Check the profile. I don't want to be, I want to be humble. But in my humility, I'm obliged to reveal certain information. Mm -hmm. In 1995, I was in the ING government, interim national government of Anishinaabe as the personal assistant to the Honorable Minister of Transportation. Thereafter, I proceeded as the personal assistant to the Honorable Minister of Power and Steel. I returned to legal practice after that, and I was called upon during that period to be part of a team that drew up the planning law and regulation for legal state. And the purpose of that regulation is that buildings should remain up. And it is interesting. I, I don't want to repeat it that Mr. Baba Jide Sonwolu was the vice chairman of this committee. General Rees was the chairman. General Rees was the gentleman that built Cooperative Villa. I'm sure you were there. There is a Solomon Major Kudumi architect. Nice man, he was there. Professor Kredile, he was there. Ade Dira was there. There are people from Ministry of Justice. And we sat for almost two years, looking holistically at the problem of buildings in Lagos State. And we put in place a legislation whereby buildings will never, ever fall. Interestingly, and by way of a complete turnaround, when Babajide Sonwolu had administered the state for so many years, buildings have not stopped collapsing. His tenure has been christened as the governor of collapsing buildings. But buildings were collapsing before he came. I'm sure you can tell me the ones that collapsed. But the one I know that I'm telling you, 21-story building collapsed. It has never happened in Nigeria before, 21. And those buildings were paid for in dollars. We later discovered the buildings were never insured. Those people, it was a colossal loss. The man who was in charge, he died in the building. We don't have information. The deputy governor came out and he said to us it was 21 stories that was approved. The man who was in charge of the year said it was 16. So believe me sincerely, 21 came down. Seven came down in Unuru. Five came down, building collapse in everything. And you see this man, for me, Considering the amount of revenue that comes into this state, the amount of revenue, internally generated revenue, and considering what is received from the center, we don't have a business having this kind of state. Our water transportation is almost zero. When Jack Conde was there, he did better. He had Baba Kekere Ferry, he had the Tafaji Ferry, which was there on the water. It will commit you if you had a good ferry service. The commuting time between Lagos CMS. And a papa is not more than 15 minutes. You don't have to be on the road at all. If you have a functional ferry service, you can also do the same thing with Badagri. You don't have to come through all this first stack, be on the road. So we need to think outside the box. There are places in the world, more than 15 years ago, I was in Amsterdam. I entered the ferry. It's called Ulysses. It's a three-day car ferry. On there is a car park. You drive your car, you can sit down there, between Dublin and, and London. It's, it's, there are many ferries everywhere. I've, I've done my investigation. My friends and I, we have looked at it because I do a lot of maritime work. And we know that there are ferries everywhere in the world we can repair, we can fix, turn around, and bring it to our waterways. So that if you are moving from CMS to Ikorodu, you don't have to be on the road. If you are going from Ikorodu to Ijede, you don't have to be on the road. If you are going to Badagri, you don't have to be on the road. 
What does that do? Lagos is not a landlocked state. Eh? It's a state that is blessed with water everywhere. And that is the reason why we see the customs and everybody. We are a generating revenue state for the federal government of Nigeria. At a point, the internally generated revenue of Lagos State was that of 30 states of Nigeria. One small state, 30 states combined. So we don't have any reason for us to be in this state other than the fact that we are very corrupt officials of government. They look aside. They don't do what they have to do. If everybody will have to earn their own pay, and they exist in this company they call Alphabeta, Alphabeta belongs to one of them that has consistently been collecting revenue on behalf of government. We don't have any business with Alphabeta. Okay. My friend, executive order 01 upon swine, I will terminate that useless contract. Okay, uh, well, okay, maybe that is part of the question I'm, I'm going to ask yes, you ask. now. Because um, when you talk about uh, corruption, it's like it's an establishment, it's something, it's an institution that uh, no one man can, can, can abolish. How do you intend to fight this corruption that is bedeviling you see, uh, uh, Lagos State? You see, the word corruption itself has different meanings and usages. It depends on the way you want to apply it. So I am now speaking specifically of the corruption inherent in the bureaucracy. I am not defining corruption everywhere. I'm limiting this word in its applied times by way of a juxtaposition to corruption in government. If everybody did what they ought to do, if a man who is going to approve the building plan knows that he has to approve it, you don't start building until you have your approval. If the people who are supposed to inspect floor by floor, they do their job, things should be okay. My brother, eh? if the money we are getting in this state is going to be applied for the benefit of the state, we are going to get somewhere. We have this problem with uh, local government. Lagos state government is one of the states that is leading the opposition to local government autonomy. Now, what is the reason for that? The constitution is clear. We are a tripartite government. The federal, the state, and the local government. And allocation should go directly to each. The federal takes its own. The state takes their own. Local government should have their money directly. Why is it going to the executive? It's an abnormality. So it has to be corrected. There are things that we are doing in this state that is not making the state grow. We have a last man. Very corrupt organization. Last man. How will you get these people to, to turn around and Which not be corrupt? The people that you say are corrupt are making these things the way they are because you can't be everywhere at yeah, the because, same time. You see, the bureaucracy does not assume that one man is going to govern everywhere. What the bureaucracy tells you is that there's a functional system. The man who has the bureaucracy in the ministry is not the commissioner as it were. It's a political appointee. It's the permanent secretary. And it is assumed that is well grounded in the bureaucracy. He knows what to do. So what do we do? We also ensure that we have a retraining system, a, a retraining system, whereby each person should understand that we are paid to do a certain job. The way government works, if you are given a, a contract, mm -hmm. there, is also, there is already factored into that contract your profit margin if you did it best. But you find people, they do shoddy jobs, they work away. In Lekki, they have been removing the paving stones on the road now for like four or five times. Who did that job initially that didn't do it well? So we must have a corporate responsibility system whereby we have a sense of accountability. The bureaucracy can be more refined. We can also do a rewarding system. We can also encourage people. If you did X, Y, and Z, we are going to do so, so, and so. We can also look at the possibility of recalibrating the salaries of the civil servants and giving them enhancement. What we have in the system now, in Lagos State and in most parts of this country, is just a bureaucracy that is dysfunctional. You and I now, we live in Nigeria. Today, I've not seen Naira for the last seven days. I've not seen it at all. I don't have cash. People are stranded. They can't go to work. And that is because we have the system of a president and a CBN governor who don't understand the basic rules of macroeconomics. You don't do this. In other countries, there will have been real problems. We're not at war. You go to the bank, the bank is not even open. You go to the bank, you cannot even enter the bank. What kind of country is this one? So we need to actually tell ourselves that we are, we are operating governance at the level of the subhumans. 
And that's where anywhere we go in the world, we are, so, we are, we are, so, we are subjected to these people. These are bad people. We are not bad people. We are very good people. Cerebral. We can think. We write books. We are professors. We are lawyers. We are good media people. So what we are having is a fake version of who we are. So we need to evolve, evolve an educational system. Do you know in this country they don't teach history more in schools? If you don't know the history of your people, how then do you understand what your grandfathers did for the development of your country? So there's so many things that have taken place that we almost now look at it and see we don't have hospitals. When this new president, whenever he had a dick, he will go to Europe. People will go and start wasting him there. The one that has just been elected, the one that is there now, the same thing applies. Even when the vice president had issues with his, with his, uh, he didn't go to general hospital. He went to one, one Ajebota hospital in Ikeja. When you enter the place, it's as if you're in England. We must develop our health system in such a way that we are part of what we are. I have never, ever been for health treatment anywhere in the world except in Lagos. Whenever I was Ill, I'm ill, I go to I go to Creek Hospital. If I'm not there, I go to Air Force Hospital. If not, I go to Loot. I have cards of all these people. If the last suit, whatever option I have, and if I become governor of Lagos State and I'm dying, if anybody takes me anywhere in this country, the person will my ghost will be chasing him all over the place. Okay, um, <clears throat> because our, our time is up, well, let's uh, try to round off uh, in the, the shortest possible time. What are the first three things that you will do if you are elected into office? I will reform last man. I will reform last man. I will employ more people and I will make it a human traffic friendly organization because with that I will be able to decongest the road. I will create for them an eight hour shift system so that at every point in time I, the traffic will move. There's some areas in Lagos that we have traffic gridlock almost the whole day. So we need to look at those areas. VGC, Okokomaiko, Ikorodu, Gajagri. Certain areas we will need to look at and we will employ people. More so, I will develop our agriculture. You know this fish we eat. Uh, we do agriculture, um, fish agriculture shows now that you don't have to even actually go into the sea because you have a system now whereby you can have a tank system and you can actually build the fish. I will encourage our young people, our youth, to engage in that agriculture. I will provide for them small, medium scale industries, facilities that they can actually use to start this business and they can make money for themselves, they can be self-employed. And more importantly, I will correct the mistake that this administration has made and they, will, they are making. They have this university mentality. Do you understand? That whoever goes to school must go to university. It is complete nonsense. It's wrong. Because you see, polytechnic education offers a different education than the university. So people can go to the polytechnics, they will be engineers, they will be accountants, and they will be very, very successful. And also, more importantly, this question of collapsing colleges of education into universities is also something that they have not well thought out. Because the colleges of education, they're actually there to train teachers. Teachers who will serve in the schools. They are professional teachers. They get their NCE. Later, they may want to get other degrees. But we don't have to make every institution university. And more importantly, like I said, the education system, the schools are not, the schools are, they don't have teachers, they don't have pupils. So I will encourage our teachers and whoever does well in this country, in my state, especially the doctors, they are going to have a special scholarship scheme. Do you understand? We are going to ensure that we have more people in science. We are going to be training them from the hospital. And you see, if you go to Arona Road there, there used to be a nursing, a nursing hostel there, huge. If you go there now, you will be surprised. They have allocated it to themselves. It has become their campaign office. How does any government do that? The School of Nursing is located there to feed the general mm -hmm. hospital. The nurses, they stay there, they go to the hospital. But Soro Olu and his political godfather, they have turned it into campaign office. They brought it down. So me, I will again revoke that license. That's your fault. I put the school of nursing back. 
Okay, yeah, we've been hearing we from... Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, I know there is a lot more to say, yes. but uh, we can only, only wish you good luck on Saturday. Thank you very uh, much. When the polls can open uh, for voting for the people of Lagos State. We've been listening to uh, Kunle Otman, who is the Social Democratic Party SDP Lagos governorship candidate, and he has promised a lot of things. Everything lies in the hands of the people. Saturday is another day for election. Go out and vote for your choice. If he's the one, then choose him. If he's someone else, let's hope for a better Lagos than what we have right now. We'd like to say thank you to you, Mr. Uthman, for coming on the show. And we are, like I said, we wish you well. I, I, I reciprocate the gesture. I'm clear for, grateful for this opportunity. And like I said, the Social Democratic Party will contest this election. Let the people decide. And whosoever emerges will shake his hands or they will shake our hands and we hope for a better Lagos in the next four years. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we thank you for staying with us. we take a short break now. And when we return, we will be taking a look at the boot party and plans for Lagos ahead of the governorship election. Stay with us.